Hello my dudes, welcome back to the channel, this is Kadima with another Elden Ring DLC build video. Despite the fact that I wasn't planning to do um, any more of these, um, I thought about it and there's still a couple of weapons that I want to try again, give them a second chance, and that's why I'm making a few more build videos. Let's talk about this particular build, we're going to be using the Great Sword of Radan, the Lord version. Um, let's take a look at the weapon. It's got a strength scaling uh, of C, Dex C and Intelligence D. Attributes required 32 Strength, 24 Dexterity, 15 Intelligence. It's a Colossal Sword, however as you can see it's more of a double Colossal Sword um, unless you one hand it and then you just have it in one hand, the other one goes away. If you two hand it, you've got two swords, very slow. It does quite a bit of damage, Not nothing major compared even to other colossal weapons with just one um, actual weapon. But it is a funny thing to use, it's got a very anime Ash of War, the promised consort. Um, it does a bit of damage but nothing extraordinary when compared to other builds. However, if you feel like um, using this weapon, this might be the right setup for you. For the Armor as usual, Helm of Solitude, Armor of Solitude, Gauntlets of Solitude and the Young Lion's Greaves for the 88 Poise. However, I'm boosting that Poise with the Bull Goat's Talisman. Also, we are using the Great Jar so we have a bit of equip load so we can carry all this much weight. Sacred Scorpion Charm which raises holy attack but lowers damage negation. The damage negation is not so much of a problem because we are quite tanky. But the Holy Attack raise uh, will benefit the Ash of War because it's pretty much just Holy Damage that comes out of all those beams of light. The Shard of Alexander. I tried to test the difference if this was helping with the damage of the sword. Unfortunately, with it on, with it off, the results were inconclusive for me because the, the beams do different kinds of damage this, even if you're closer or um, more far away. Couldn't really tell the difference, but just as for precaution and because in all honesty there's nothing better to use there, I'm going with the Shard of Alexander. If you do know for a fact that this isn't working, which um, I have tried in different builds using Holy Damage and it clearly isn't, um, just consider using something else. Uh, maybe go with the um, Earth Tree's Favor, for example, give you a bit more um, HP, Stamina and Equip Load. But it's entirely up to you. Exalted Flesh is something I recommend for the extra damage. If you are playing PvE uh, or Invasions, of course, the Flask I recommend having Holy Shrouding Cracked Tear and Blood Sucking Cracked Tear. This will boost your damage massively and you're gonna just be exterminating things. For PvP, uh, when it comes to Invasions, this weapon is actually quite good because the Ash of War, if you manage to trade with uh, someone attacking you, you will most likely stun lock them into in a way that if they try to roll away from you, uh, it will roll catch them and you will finish them off. Uh, however, the problem is it does consume quite a bit of um, FPs as you saw. I used it uh, one time and it did nearly half my uh, FPs with this uh, level that I got, with this setup that I got. So use it wisely, don't spam it just mindlessly because you will run out of... FPs and you run out of stamina and then you will be, be very vulnerable. Let's talk about the stats. Level 151, Vigor at 60, Mind 16, Endurance 40, Strength 55, Dexterity 28, Intelligence 15. And that's pretty much the build in a nutshell. If you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. It helps us grow. If you are one of my regular uh, viewers, thank you so much for the continuous support. But enough talking, let's go for the PvE and PvP examples when using this loose cannon build. So let's start with the Black Knight as usual. Get that Exalted Flesh going, get the Flask ready. Mimic is already there on, on standby. We consume the Flask. We're gonna approach him from the left and then just dodge. And then we're just gonna spam the L2 to be honest. He, he does manage to interrupt me not once but twice. And at this stage I didn't even realize um, the physique, uh, the flask did not have the blood sucking tear. It had something else um, which didn't really help. But still, as you can see, if you mess up, you'll be able to kill the guy with this build. Now, for the chief blood fiend, not a problem. Let's get the mimic going. At this stage I had fixed the flask, so I had the blood sucking tear and the holy crack tear. So, all good to go. 
Get that Mimic some therapy because he's still very obsessed with the guys outside the fog. He finally decided to give the boss some love. Um, which gives us some space to um, get ready to start. And look at the damage. I'm only now approaching the boss. Every hit does a big chunk of damage. I actually nearly died here as you can tell. Uh, just stopped to uh, refuel my HP. And then I just go for it. But look at the health. It just melts away. It's really good for PvE, this weapon. For PvP, uh, mainly for the arena, uh, it's a bit tricky to use because it's very easy to avoid, very easy to dodge roll. The only thing that makes this weapon special, it is, uh, in this case, the Ash of War. It's the one thing that makes the weapon worth going for. If it was for the moveset on its own, it's not a particularly good weapon. In any case, as you can see, I still managed to get quite a few wins. Um, I, I had, of course, more wins than this, but I decided to uh, only share the wins that um, l took less than one minute to, uh, to get. Um, I had some very long fights when using this setup because a lot of people just run away all the time, which is not ideal for a PvP build video. In any case, I managed to catch this guy with the last hit, GG. Now, for this one, um, I, I forgot to say, which I hope you notice, I'm using the FT Fire Pots. It is a good way to trick your opponents to roll towards you and attack you. And if they do that, you can go with the Ash of War. If you trade, uh, you'll most likely stunlock them. And that's pretty much the idea of the FT Fire Pots. It's not so much on getting the damage. However, each one of those pots does somewhere between... 300 and 500 damage so it is still worth if you try to catch them you get a little bit of damage going as you can see having a little bit of a hard time because as i said the weapon is very easy to dodge but if the ashes of war connect it's not so easy as you just saw uh, even though this guy was on light load i managed to catch him with the very last hit and finish the job as for this guy um again he's you can tell I don't think he was expecting the kind of damage that is about to happen because he decided to trade into me. Uh, there was no need for him to be here. So I decided, okay, if he's going to trade, I'm going to trade into the Ash of War. He decided to try to parry. Bad idea. And that's when he decided to trade into the Ash of War. Um, and I got the win. Now this guy, um, typical back spa uh, backhand L2 spammer. I don't have a problem. If you want to play like that, play like that. But take notice that the only button he ever presses is L2. That's it. Look, L2 again. He doesn't even attack with normal attacks. It's just L2 the whole time. I again repeat, I do not have a problem uh, with people choosing to do that. I just find it that it's not a very effective way to fight. Because it makes you incredibly predictable. Oh, there you go. Another blind spot. Oh, and another one. I am surprised. <laughs> In any case... We're going to get the win easy, get that 610 damage per pot, so two pots was nearly 1300 damage. But okay, if you want to spam blight spots, come on, I'll show you what happens. And GG. But here we go again, this guy was using a shield build, I've made one myself, um, and by the looks of it, way better than this guy's, because I am going to manage to win just by trading Ash of War hits with this guy. Uh, Again, I don't know if he was expecting this kind of damage, uh, but he's using the shield, all he has to do is block and attack, but all I have to do is spam Ash of War, and there you go, GG. This did not require any skill at all. In any case, let's go to the next one, uh, get those FT pots ready, of course, after consuming the Exalted Flesh. This guy's coming with the little crossbow, you gotta be careful, you don't wanna get any bleed going because if we do get the bleed um, we get interrupted and we don't want that I think he was trying to parry there because he just stood in front of me and then he realized it was the ash of war and he ran away he manages to land a couple of hits I tried the backstab it didn't connect and then he tried to parry and then that's when I had confirmation okay this guy clearly is trying to parry which is fine but if he tries to parry this let's see what happens He's going to try to parry again. Here we go. Right, try to parry this, bro. <laughs> no. And he fell for the trap with the FT pot. GG. We got a few more fights coming.
this guy is using a uh, Mog's sword. I actually um, love that sword. Unfortunately, it's not from the um, DLC. But I might do a build using that um, with a few spells from the DLC. Unfortunately, I had run out of stamina, so I couldn't continue with the Ash of War and got interrupted. But I do manage to get the kill uh, with a, a nice fire pot here. Look at this throw. Free aiming. <laughs> GG, bro. Well played. Now, this guy, again, um, we had quite a few fights. One of them was very long. Another one he won. Uh, but the one he won... Uh, he was just spamming out too as well and I had run out of patience of chasing him around so no problem uh, it's everyone with their own style uh, it's just the few first fights were interesting he wasn't simply just spamming uh, L2 but it's, it's as I said the weapon itself it's a very tricky to use because it's very easy to dodge uh, unless you get the roll catching like I am about to and one shot this guy there you go GG nearly one shot but I can just reconnect with another follow-up GG bro now another good one this guy is using the black steel uh, twin blades very good weapon I already made a build video on that one but uh, I did notice in just in time he was about to use lightning so uh, lucky for me the fiery pot did a little bit of damage uh, I actually timed that dodge very poorly but still managed to escape get some damage going get that dodge um, I had a feeling he was going to try to attack me so I just went with the trade and I managed to roll catch him with the ash of war now this is going to be the last one guys um, I'll just let you watch it and enjoy the final uh, duo example with this build if you do give it a try, let me know what you think. If you have better ideas for this build, leave it in the comment section down below. Uh, as always, thank you so much for your su uh, support. If you haven't subscribed, now is a great time to do so. And I'll see you, of course, in the next build video. Thank you all for watching. Take care. Cheerio!